introduction to Chicopee High School. Chicopee High School, located on Front Street in Chicopee, Massachusetts, serves students in grades 9 through 12. Sports are popular throughout the school. CHS features a brand new basketball court and swimming pool. The new CHS, in its current location, was completed in 2004 after the original school burned down. In 2007, there were almost 1,200 students, with the majority of the population being of the Caucasian race. The Chicopee Autism Program uses discrete trial teaching, an intervention based on the principles of operant learning theory. Discrete trial teaching is used to teach a variety of skills in domains including cognitive, communication, play, social, and self-help. Basic principles of discrete trial teaching include breaking a skill down to its component parts, allowing repetitive practice and providing prompting and fading, and using reinforcement. Prompts are used and then faded out and used reinforcement. Another approach used at the Chicopee Autism Program is pivotal response training, which is used with discrete trial teaching. Pivotal response training emphasizes key pivotal skills, asserting that students who learn pivotal skills will generalize them to other areas. Although these teaching methods can be found to be beneficial, the students can only receive these instructions until age 22. Hello, I am going to speak to you about my experience working with the children of the Chicopee High School Autism Program. I observed the teachers and the students in the program with one partner for an entire school day for three Fridays in a row. My first impression of the school was that it was very large and security was taken as a priority. Everyone in the school, including students and staff, were required to wear name badges at all times. In addition, the doors of the school locked from the outside at around 10 a.m., and the only way back in was to go all the, way, all the way to the front entrance for someone to let you in. The autism program itself had five students in it, ranging from ages 16 to 20. There were three boys and two girls with varying degrees of autism, and each with their own unique personalities and characteristics. The program was run by two teachers and one aide. One of the most prominent aspects of the program was that each day was very structured. Each morning before the children arrived, the teachers wrote the day's schedule on the board, and each day followed pretty much the same routine. When the children arrived, they were expected to write down the schedule of the day, choose what they wanted for lunch, and participate in morning meeting, which included identifying the day and the date, and their plans for what they were to do after school that day, or to share what they did the day before. Many of the children required either verbal or picture prompts to help them to communicate. The use of a reward system was also very prominent. Each child had their own interests and those were used as rewards for good behavior. For example, for good communication skills and appropriate emotional responses, one of the boys liked to play a game on the computer. For him, he had three times he could use the computer. However, if he did not behave well, he would have one computer time taken away. For another child, his rewards were sensory based, such as listening to music or playing with a sensory object. In the area of effective communication skills, the Chicopee Autism Program excelled. They had assistive devices available, including the iPhone, a communication board, and a computer with various programs. The children were also taught various life skills, such as how to count money and how to recycle. These skills were taught through discrete trial teaching and pivotal response training. However, the areas of self-care and activities of daily living were hardly touched upon, even though these areas were identified by a teacher as being the most needed and one that children would greatly benefit from. Next, Kelly will give a more personal viewpoint of the autism program. Overall, I would describe my fieldwork experience at the Chicopee Autism Program as a positive one. I also enjoyed interacting with the autistic population. Prior to entering into this fieldwork experience, I did not know what to expect. However, I quickly discovered each student in the program was unique with their own personalities and needs. All of the students in the program were requ required to receive training in the areas of social interactions, money management, and job skills. The speech and language therapist at the school took the initiative to develop a program to implement the training through a school store. 
Every Friday during lunch block, the students and staff would prepare to run the school store. The students sold inexpensive school supplies, such as pencils, pads, and erasers. The students enjoyed and were excited to participate in the school store. Not only did the students find the experience rewarding, but they unknowingly were learning the significant skills. Over the course of my time in the Chicopee Autism Program, I observed the students' need for sensory stimulation. Most of the time, I noticed the students needed the sensory stimulation in order to calm and relax themselves. One student needed sensory stimulation of hand touching, another needed to crumple paper, and another enjoyed listening to music during toenail clipping. However, I noticed the prayer professionals used the, sen the sensory stimulation as a reward if the students cooperated or did well on an assignment. I also gathered teaching the students hygiene techniques and especially the carryover at home was challenging. I think further education development of a program addressing this issue is needed. So I'm going to be talking about the needs at the Chicopee Autism Program and we are going to focus on ABL including dressing which is the categories of wearing clean clothes that are appropriate and that the students adjust their clothes properly and the category of grooming which includes obtaining and using the correct supplies, brushing their teeth, um, taking care of their hands and face, taking care of their nails and skin and combing their hair and the category of hygiene which includes putting on deodorant, using shampoo and other hygiene supplies, and hand washing. Based on what was just discussed, our areas of focus are on activities of daily living, self-care, and hygiene. The following components will be taught to the students of the Chicopee High Autism Program. Getting dressed, washing face, brushing teeth, combing hair, nail care, taking a shower, washing their hair, shaving, using the toilet, and puberty.